Hello. I hope you all enjoyed that video about me. I hope you got to know me a little better. So in this video, I'm going to give you some information that will help you fill out your Tuesday notes assignment. Um, so we do not have our Zoom class today, but here's what I'd like for you to do. So if you click into our class and scroll down to the paintbrush, takes you to our assignments this week. So you will see, let me go ahead and publish it. All of the ones from yesterday, your Monday assignment, your project for this week, your discussion board for this week, and your optional Canvas Studio video. Um, so today's Tuesday. So click into Tuesday lecture and notes and see what there is for today. So usually we would have our um zoom links right here but since there's no class today you just i want you to watch my about me video and then watch this tuesday lecture video um which will help you complete your tuesday notes for today so for this video you're going to need some blank paper a pen or pencil colored pencils crayons markers if you have them okay so Today, we're going to um, continue talking about lines. So if you missed yesterday, remember we were talking about the elements of art. So the elements of art, uh, we also did this cool little activity, which we're gonna do today to a different um, song and a different artist. Um, so the elements of art are things that make your artwork more interesting. We looked at um, there are seven different ones, but we're starting with mine. So mines are used to show emotion and direct your eye in a certain way. So they can be used like this to show something that is recognizable, like a face. They can be used like this to make something that's not so realistic, but it kind of draws your eye towards this one spot where all the lines meet. Or it can be used like this. Um, lots of expressive lines. Think about the emotion that the line is creating. Um, and so all of those are representational. They show something that you recognize. While non-objective um, artwork is more like these. Zentangles, which is similar to your project for this week. Um, so that's what we talked about yesterday. Today, we're gonna look further into how does line express emotion. So with your paper and your pencil or pen, we're gonna do our Tuesday brain workout really quickly. So we're gonna to listen to Louis Armstrong's song, What a Wonderful World. Um, and as we listen to it, just like yesterday, just use your pen or pencil to start drawing lines across your paper, um, listening to the song, um, make sure you're trying to listen to what kind of emotion he's trying to portray in his um, song, okay? So just for our brain workout, I want you to complete like these first two steps. You don't have to add color yet, um, but just have some good strong lines drawn across your paper. All right, get ready and Draw. I see trees of green. I see them blue for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. see skies of blue, clouds of white, bright blessed days, dark sacred nights, and I think to myself, what a wonderful of the rainbow 
so pretty in the skies Also on the faces of people going by I see friends shaking hands Saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you I hear babies cry Watch them grow They'll learn much more Than I'll ever know And I think to myself What a wonderful world Yes, I think to myself Lots of lines, just no color, just lines that you felt with the music. So the music we just listened to um, was a song by Louis Armstrong, a very, very famous African-American um, musician, as well as activist. So Louis Armstrong was born in New Orleans, Louisiana in 1901, raised by his mother, May Ann in a neighborhood that was pretty dangerous. It was called the battlefield or known as the battlefield. Um, and he was only had a fifth grade education. Um, he dropped out of school so he could work. Those were really difficult times. Um, and he was one of the very influential artists from the Harlem Renaissance, which we will talk about um, in a few weeks. And so he ended up joining a band up north. Um, in Chicago during a time when African-American art was booming. They were just like an outpour of jazz and blues and literature and poetry and dance and visual art. And it, it was an incredible time. Um, and so it was Louis Armstrong. Um, and I want you to just keep him in mind as we um, continue with our Black History Month artist this month, okay? So, um, we'll keep going with lines. So we're talking about emotions today, like emotion of jazz music and how it influences your mind. So I want you to think what emotion do you see when you look at these kinds of lines on the left? They're very zigzaggy and pointy and almost looked rushed. Maybe that someone felt frustrated when they drew these lines. Um, this one could be, you know, confused, uh, angry, flustered, just kind of looks like a big range of emotions. Think about what the artist was feeling when they drew this line. Did they draw it really fast in a hurry? Or did they like take their time? It was nice and calm, kind of like these lines. These look kind of calm or happy. Um, and then, you know, just think each line has its own emotion something that the artist was feeling as they were creating those lines, just like you were being influenced by the music when we drew our lines for our brain workout. So non-objective art, like I said before, it doesn't show any recognizable objects. It's a lot like Zen tangles, it uses lines, shapes, and colors to create emotion without showing like someone's face or an object in the drawing. Um, like this one, this is a good example. You just have lines and you have some shapes and colors, but it's mostly the lines that are giving you the, the vibe of this um, piece of artwork and telling your eyes where to go. They're moving your eyes along the lines, you know, and all these lines are intersecting. So they're kind of moving you around this painting. 
Same thing with this one. It's a different kind of non-objective art, um, but it's very expressive and lots of lines. So think about what kind of emotion this artist was feeling. Um, and you can also tell that from colors and the texture, but line is one way to show or help show emotion and also move your eyes around this canvas or around your drawing. Um, so your eyes aren't just stuck in one spot because you never want that to happen. You worked on the whole thing. So why would you want someone to look at your art and just look at one little section of it? Um, you want them, their eyes to look and move through the whole composition. And these are a little bit different kinds of lines, but they still show emotion. These ones have recognizable things in them. So, this, but this one, it's all one connected line. They never pick up their pencil and yet it displays this kind of image, maybe frustrated, looks like the guy is yelling. Um, this one too, he looks confused. These lines are helping your brain make those connections to an emotion. Um, same with this one, she looks very free. Um, the lines are very flowy and fluid. Um, so just think about that, whether you're doing non-objective non art or representational art. So representational art uses lines, shapes, or colors to show a recognizable object. So a portrait of somebody, um, a drawing of a vase sitting on the table, those things you recognize, you recognize in your brain that they are objects from our world. Um, and so that's what's called representational art. But lines can be used in both. So these are good examples of representational art where there's some lines kind of moving your eyes through the painting. So even though there's a whole bunch of colors, if you look at this one, you still see the individual brush strokes, the individual lines that are moving your eye kind of around to me. It goes up the pier and then, whoa, through the sky, these wavy expressive lines and then back down. So it kind of takes your eye in a circle throughout the whole composition. So keep that in mind. If you're ever using representational art, drawing a picture of someone or something, then maybe consider using some lines um, to help add some detail, some more interest, but also to move your audience's eyeballs through your whole painting or your whole drawing. It's really important. Movement, that's what we've been talking about. It's so important. Movement is a principle of design, um, which you don't need to know that yet. That's more for art too, but it, just know that movement is really, really important in artwork. It's the path that the viewer's eye takes through the artwork. Um, so if you ever, if I ever ask you to draw the path that your eye sees throughout the painting, then that's all I want. I wanna see where your eye starts and where you look throughout it. Because you don't just, if it's good artwork, you're not just gonna look in one spot. Your eye's gonna go, kinda go on an adventure. And that's what you want with your artwork as well. Um, so lines can help you do that. Um, so if we were in class, we'd have this discussion, um, which painting shows movement better and why. So we have representational artwork here of something we recognize, a portrait of a lady with an umbrella in a field. And then here we have more non-objective art. There's nothing recognizable in the pictures, just lines and expression. Um, but they both show movement really well. Um, these with the intersecting lines, your eye just kind of never stops. The lines never stop. So it continues throughout the whole painting, kind of following these black lines. On the representational one, you can see movement because the, the painter has painted her skirt kind of flowing forward. So you get this sense that there's wind happening. The blades of grass are also going in that direction. Um, and the artist overall uses a lot of individual brush strokes. You can see them in there. It's not just a flat color. You can see some lines on her dress, some lines in the grass and some lines in the sky that kind of move your eye through the whole thing. And they also use that wind movement 
with this scarf to help your eye move like, oh, wow, you see her, but then there's stuff also flowing away from her. So that's two ways that you can use movement with representational art and then more with non-objective artwork, um, which is like our Zen Tangles, our um, Bad Hair Day line project for this week. Um, so remember for your project this week, it's due Friday at midnight. Um, I encourage you to listen to music that you like by uh, current African-American artists while you draw this so that you have some emotion to be influenced by. It also makes drawing just more fun, I think, to listen to music. Um, remember what emotion you're trying to show. Are you trying to have a very calm, serene project or is yours more angry um, or confused or flustered? And remember our March 4th Black History collaboration is coming up. So I encourage you um, if you find a picture in your scrap magazines of an African-American person, or if you want to draw your person instead, remember if you don't have magazines, then you can, you're gonna draw um, your person. So I encourage you to take this as an opportunity to make some art to go into that show. It'll be a really cool thing for you to do. So with that being said, if you look at our Tuesday notes, lecture and notes, this, you should have watched the About Me video already, watching this Tuesday lecture video now. And then if you keep scrolling, you'll see what I want you to do for your assignment today. So it's like the same as yesterday. I want you to um, reply to this discussion board by uploading a picture or short video of your colored in abstract line drawing from class, um, the class videos today, and typing your answers to these questions. So remember for our brain workout, we did your uh, page full of lines. So now after class, I want you to take your coloring things and color it in. So any, you can color it in any way you want to. Remember mine is markers, um, and I just filled in the shapes with different colors to make it interesting. but um you know also think about if you're like my lines are very calm and serene so i might use not oranges or reds or yellows because they're very black and angry um so maybe i'll use some some cool colors to fill in um my drawing today so color in your drawing all the way and then upload a picture or short video of your colored in abstract line drawing. And also answer these two questions. What do you think the overall emotion of jazz music is? What did you feel like while we were listening to Louis Armstrong? And what emotions do your line show in your drawing? Do you think it was influenced by the music we were listening to? Um, so if you want some more inspiration while you're coloring in your drawings, I've added um, some two more uh, Louis Armstrong, really famous songs down here. So maybe listen to those as you color in your drawing today. So in order to upload a picture or short video, remember you scroll to the bottom, you click reply, and then your text box opens up. So you can record your short video, or if you know how to upload a picture, then you can, you can upload your picture. But if you don't, and you press this music with this, this music. You press this button with the music notes. Um, and then you can click record. And remember, just record your drawing. I just want to see your drawing, your colored in drawing. And then you can finish recording, save it, and it will pop into here. And then just right underneath it, you can answer questions one and questions two and type out your answer. So you can do it all in the same text box, okay? And then you'll click post reply so that I can see um, your attendance for today and your credit for your Tuesday notes for today, okay? Um, tomorrow, Wednesday, we don't have class, but you will have an assignment which looks like this. I want you to spend some time working on your project tomorrow. So 
um, for your Wednesday notes, listen to these three Billie Holiday songs um, while you work on your Bad Hair Day line project for this week. Remember, if the videos don't load in Canvas, then try to watch them on another device. The titles are right here, right above them. Um, and then reply to the discussion board with a photo or short video of your progress on your Bad Hair Day line project. So this does not have to be your finished project. I just want to see that you did some, you listened to these three songs and at least started or started working on your project. So, you know, anywhere from this picture where you flipped through the magazines and glued it down or to this picture if you got that far. So at least start your project today um, and just show me a progress picture so that I can see that you at least started on it for today, okay? All right, um, please let me know if you have any questions and um, yeah, I'll see you on Thursday, all right? Enjoy your, your two days.